I know I said I didn't really need it, but, you know, still be fun to have regardless. Hey everyone! Anyone remember Plants vs. Zombies? It was a real classic! And I think I'm gonna play it again. I figured I'd play it again. I mean, it's been, it's been a while since I played it. I even have it for the DS, believe it or not. Which is kind of weird, but you know. I guess it's because I really wanted it in mobile form, and at the time I didn't have a smartphone, so uh, there you go. I mean, obviously I've got several devices that could qualify for that. Both with Android and iOS. I am a pr I am an Android guy, but that doesn't mean I don't have some iOS devices too. Mostly because other family members don't want them, and you know they're actually actually have decent hardware. And by that I mean I've got an iPad Mini One, and I've got an iPhone 6s Plus. Obviously not new equipment, especially the Mini One. It's actually quite aged. But one good thing about it is it's good for 32-bit games since seeing as how iOS 11 stupidly removed compatibility for 32-bit games which why would you even do that that doesn't even make any sense I mean I'm pretty sure for the most part you can play older 32-bit PC games on a 64-bit version of Windows so uh, I, I, I just maybe I just don't get it maybe there's an efficiency thing that only can only occur if you absolutely remove but maybe they should have had some kind of algorithm program to automatically convert apps and games over to 64-bit because there are many of them, for example, Do Doom RPG that no longer work. Well, Doom 2 RPG that no longer work on the... They no longer work on iOS 11 and up because it's 32-bit, which is a shame because it meant that I had to emulate it. I would have rather recorded it. I can easily record iPhone as I, as I proved because I... I have recorded games with it in the past. Like, I recorded the mobile version of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, I also did Portal Pinball, and of course I did Shadowgun Legends, probably my favorite shooter for phones. But then again, I know that's really not saying much, but you know, seems like Madfinger, they really put in a genuine effort. I mean, yeah, I know it's free to play and it's basically with the premium stuff, but it's still a fun game to, pl to actually play, which is more than you can say for, mo for most shooter games on a phone. And I think it's a really good, I think it's a really good function how you can have the, you can have the gun auto shoot when you got the cursor on the enemy, which it, it feels really natural to control is what I'm basically saying here. It, it feels very nice to control with a touch screen because otherwise you would have to be pressing a button and it just makes it feel off. Just saying, you you would you'd be um, you'd be surprised just how much easier it gets when you don't have to press the shooting button yourself. You just have to worry about aiming and moving, and maybe you know moving what mo changing weapons. I don't know why I said moving weapons. When you only have to worry about just aiming, moving, maybe reloading if you want to do that automatically. Actually, I think what happens is if you're not looking at an enemy. For long enough, he reloads on his own, but, you know, maybe you want to switch weapons or use a grenade or a special power or something. I mean, you, you obviously got to use the touch screen for that, but shooting is automatic. Of course, on the subject of games that are tailor-made for touch screens, it seems like Plants vs. Zombies was made specifically for a touch screen. I mean, granted, I'm playing it on a PC with, with a mouse, and uh, it still feels just fine, but... I mean, I can't imagine playing this on the console versions that it came out on. I, ma I imagine that would feel a little awkward. Especially in comparison, because, you know, as opposed to just dragging it out like this, it's it's almost got that Flash that flash game charm to it. You know, like you, like you, you might have seen if you had browsed on Newgrounds at one point in the past. It's got that kind of charm to it, but... I mean... That's not to say it, it doesn't look really good, because it looks really good. I'm just... I'm mostly saying from a gameplay perspective, it, it feels like one of those old Flash games. It actually looks quite good in the aesthetic department. It really helps that they use those... those pu that puppet style of animation where it has the body parts, and then they just animate them, having them moving, moving around. It doesn't use frames for all of them, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I'm sure some of you... some of you get it. But anyway... That's beside the point. I guess I should probably start playing this game now. Although the game is obviously going to be a little slow to start at first. 
It has to ease itself into it, so to speak. Like mini games. Okay, come on, hurry up. Hurry up, you stupid sunflowers. Can't you tell there are zombies on our tail? Come on, overclock. Overclock your pedals. Reach in deep. We know you can do it. Okay, I've got three of them now. If each of them were to just get one, and I get the one from the, from the sun itself, then, you know, I would have enough for a pea shooter already, but I suppose that's just not meant to be. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, you plant them at different intervals, they're gonna make sun at inter different intervals. I guess they're just solar powered. Right, and of course the third one decides to go in the one lane that doesn't have a protection. Crud. Okay, there we go. Of course the potato mine is just gonna make this way easier because with a potato mine all you gotta do is plop a couple of down for the first few for the first two zombies and then you can very quickly amass sun. That is a great way to do it. Not that it matters anymore because I've got a full row of pea shooters and once I get the second row, the second column, I'm sorry. I think those are rows and those are columns if I'm not mistaken. So I've got a second column going here. And once I get it done, the cone zombies, well, they're gonna be flat out of luck. It's time for that cone to become a flathead. Come on, pinhead. It's time for me to pin you to the ground. Oh, that one is especially boned. Well, he's gonna miss his bones soon enough. He's gonna be deboned is more like it. Hey, buddy. How's it going? I almost feel sorry for them now because they have no chance. I mean, one more roan is basically a Gatlin P. Which is ridiculously overpowered for zombies like this. They're just cone zombies and regular zombies. I mean, what are you gonna do, right? There we go. Everything is just fine. Die. Again. Well, may as well use the full, fa full, full force of a Gatlin P on this guy. These guys. Oh, well, let's, let's do all of them, even though it really isn't necessary. Hey! That was just rude. That was rude. Rude. That's just rude. Blocks off zombies and protects your other plants. That's one hard nut. Okay, now we're going full out. This is where the rubber meets the road now. Come on, sunflower. Produce with all your might. So that we don't die. There we go. Everything is coming up me. Any day now. Gonna have to be quick about this. Come on. Come on, just two of you. One of you can rest. The other two have to charge. Oh, crud. There we go. Okay. Hopefully that was good enough. Here we go. At least on the plus side, I've got more room to put sunflowers. So that'll be even more defense. An offense. Well, technically it's mostly defense because they're the ones they're the ones intruding, so it, it is basically defense. Oh crud. They caught me with my pants down. There we go. That's more like it. There is way more than enough to easily produce pea shooters, or at least there should be. Come on. Even if only half of you are producing, that should easily be enough. Right? I mean, right now there are six of you. If just three of you, plus the sun, produce some, that'll instantly guarantee me pea shooters. At least that's the way my math is going. Well, right now I have seven, so that's three and a half. Now it is four. You have four times two. Everything's going good. Well, at least now I have some kind of defense. Actually, I think pea shooter, a, a single pea shooter can destroy a cone head. It's just... Obviously not if he's halfway across the lawn. I think 
If I remember correctly, if he's all the way on the other side and he just appeared and you've already got a pea shooter, it can barely get the job done. Yeah, you can sort of see it right now. But it does feel a little more secure if you have more than one, obviously. But I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna do the the power equivalent of a Gatlin P and then put the nuts in front of them. That seems like it would be the best course of action, right? Yeah, nobody ever said that this was a an extremely fast-paced game, at least at first. The survival mode now, that, that can get pretty hectic. Especially when the gargantuans start coming out, the, the ones that are basically Omega ones and they require even more firepower to take out. Apparently the, the predominant strategy, to my knowledge, is to basically just implant a crap ton of uh, cop cannons and then just go to town on them. Like, you, you have garlic shrooms on the, the, the extreme ends. Actually, you know what? This might be a game that would be better off with the cursor enabled, because now you can actually see where I'm doing everything. It, it, it just, just magically doing it by themselves. I kind of forgot about that. So yeah, you would have, you would have garlic shrooms at the, the, the far ends, that way the the zombies would eat it, and then they would get corralled in, into the middle there. And of course, that, that would be a pool lane right there. And then you would have a lot of cattails, because they, they basically shoot zombies anywhere. Which is pretty awesome. They're basically like homing missiles. I mean, yeah, they don't always hit their target. Oh, look, it's a shovel. This is where we meet Crazy Dave. Let's you dig up a plant to make room for another plant. Greetings, neighbor. The name's Crazy Dave. But you can just call me Crazy Dave. Listen, I've got a surprise for you. But first, I'll need you to clear your lawn. You just shovel and dig up these plants. Let the digging commence! Okay. Whatever you say, man. Okay, goody, now for the surprise. We're going bowling! Here, take this walnut. Why did I put a walnut in your hand? Because I'm crazy! Now go, call me a winner! This guy's nice. <laughs> I mean, I'd hang out with him. Maybe even have a drink with him. Why not? He seems like an up on... He seems like he's on the up and up. Okay, is is there just straight up no other zombies appearing? I'm, not, I'm just gonna save those because those are insanely helpful when, when there's a crap ton, so might not be such a good idea to immediately waste them. Ah, oh, there we go. That's good. It's good to get the combos going. Actually, I don't think you can get coins yet, so it doesn't really matter, but at some point after you get after you're able to get coins, it's it gives you coins too, which Helps when you're trying to buy stuff, you know, like the special plants, like the aforementioned. Yeah, I think the garlic shrooms you have. No, not the garlic shrooms, just the garlic plants. I think those ones are basically the ones you have to use in game currency to buy. I mean, it's not really a game where you. It's not really a microtransactions game. I mean, even the second one was surprisingly light on it, considering this is EA we're talking about. But at least Pop Popcap had the integrity to not make the microtransactions too big of a deal. And it is it, it, it was free to play when it came out, so... I mean, they had to make their money back somehow. At least they didn't impose time limits on you just to play the game. I mean, there was a time limit to get basically special powers that automatically power up your plants when you plant them. It does make... it does help, but... I mean, you don't technically need them. And you can get those for free just by waiting for the seeds. So if you're having trouble with it, just wait for the seeds. It doesn't seem too bad. That's pretty much only if you're having trouble, though. I would imagine. This is getting fun. Okay, watch this. Oh, yeah. And I still got three of them. So all I gotta do is just let them get, let them get concentrated enough and I can just blow all of them up. Fun times, right? Let's let's make an example out of that flag guy. 
That should break up their morale. And now we just blow them up. Oh, looks like one lane survived. Not for much longer. Ah, here we go, the potato mine. That's where my strategy finally comes to fruition. Explodes on contact, but takes time to arm itself. This is where things get interesting. Heh. <laughs> now for the the winning strategy that probably everyone knows about by now because everyone probably uses it because it's so obvious. Don't even have to plant any uh, defensive plants yet. I just sit here and farm sun until the third zombie. Because those zombies do take forever. Here you go, buddy. See? It's that simple, isn't it? That way you can just focus on getting the sunflowers down. You don't have to waste sunlight on getting those pea shooters out. You can just keep plopping these guys down. And then by the time there's an actual threat, as in more than one zombie at a time, you will have had so much sun production it won't even matter. It'll just be effortless. Okay, come on. And you can also use the second one. That really helps. Spoodow achievement. Spoodow indeed. Spoodow. Almost sounds like a sort of potato martial arts. Spoodow. Or maybe it's a battle cry. Spoodo, 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 spoodo. Wow, that doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? It's not exactly an aura, aura, or a muda, 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 muda kind of situation here. Spoodo. Spoodo, spoodo, spoodo. Buddha, 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 buddha. I mean, you can you can sort of make it work if you just axe the S. But then again, it won't even sound like itself. Spud, 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 spud. Now, the S makes it a tongue twister, and unfortunately, if you get rid of that, then you're pretty much getting rid of the pun, so. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Okay, let's get this gone. Let's get this started. Of course, these are especially going to come in handy this time because those pole vaulters, they rush at you. But of course, once they've gone over a plant, then they just become regular zombies. Making it very useful to have them trip over the nuts. For obvious reasons. See? Then they become weak. And slow. Perfect fodder for your plant army. I will rule the world with these plants. What I'd like to know is why the guy keeps unplanting them every time. It's like every other day. Do these plants just... Are they basically super mutants that can only last a day or something? Do they just rot away after every day? I can understand maybe the ones that the zombies have eaten stay and gone, but... If you've got an entire unstoppable army of plants, and then the next day you're, you're pretty much back at square one, that, that says a lot about your ineptitude as a gardener. Are we sure that the main character here who controls all the plants isn't, isn't actually a very sucky gardener? Because that's the impression I'm starting to... That's, that's the question I'm starting to ask myself here. If he is the kind of person who would have all of his plants just, just up and vanish the next morning, it seems like he's not very good at keeping plants alive is what I'm saying. Just saying. Actually, I'm gonna blow him up. There we go. Much easier than having to deal with it. There we go. Everything is just fine. Just a little more and you are dead, friendo. You really think you can handle three of them with just an arm? Ooh, the ice room. Now this is a good one. Shoots frozen peas that damage and slow the enemy. It puts them on ice, to say the least. Although it isn't really helpful to have more than one per column. Per row, I mean. There, there's really no point in having more than one per row because, I mean, it's going to freeze them enough anyway. It's not like there's going to be a, so many zombies that it just becomes overwhelmed. And of course, when one zombie gets slowed down, the other one's going to move at normal speed, go ahead of it, and then it'll get shot, and then it'll get frozen, and then it'll be a it'll be a lovely little pattern now, won't it? Hey, buddy. How's it going, friend? Oh, don't mind me. We got plenty of time before you meet your death. 
But in the meantime, how's it going, pal? How's the afterlife treating you, huh? I mean, I may as well make small talk while you shuffle towards your inevitable death. Either you're too stupid to realize it, or for some reason you're compelled to move forward even knowing that you're going to die. I honestly don't know which one's sadder. Probably the one where you know you're gonna die, but you, you're you helpless to do anything about it. That would probably be pretty sad, wouldn't it? If they are aware that they're going to die, but they keep moving anyway because they feel compelled to? Or heck, maybe the lead guy is just brainwashing them. They have no choice. They're compelled to. Who knows how these zombies work? Then again, they're probably so stupid they don't even realize that this death. Ah, right. I probably should have been planting the freeze shrooms. You know what? I'll just, I'll just put in this row. Why not? Maybe I shouldn't have done that so soon. Oh, well. My guard, my rules. Crap. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have been so cocky. Oh, well. Like I said, my guard, my rules. He's probably not going to get over there for a while. By the time he gets anywhere near close, he's going to be dead. His cone is already starting to bend a little. And now I've got two of them. Okay, come on. Well, I was going to get the last pe last regular one down, but now i got to gotta add some more defense over there because another conehead just appeared. Another pinhead who wants to get shot. Alright, pinhead. Your time is up. Now die. Forever. Maybe this sounds weird, but I'm one of those people that does not like temporary things in games. You know, temporary buffs. I prefer to favor things that have a permanent effect. Like, like, say, Pokemon. I'm not the kind of person who, tend, who typically gets the X items. I tend to avoid those. If there's something I get, it'll be something like the proteins of the irons or something like that that permanently increases stats. Although, apparently, that has the best effect if they're at a level 100, I think. I'm not really sure about that, but apparently that's what I heard. You know, the winter shrooms here, I doubt I need any more than three rows, so I can just leave this one empty. That way, if the pole vultures go over it, well, then they've got a little ways to go before they actually hit anything, you know? I think it's a good strategy. Also, I just realized this is the first one where you actually have two waves. Isn't that nice? I get even more chance to show off the ultimate power. This time, I'll actually have time to build everything up to completion. Should be fun, right? Actually, what I could do, one thing I could do is just start digging up the ones in the back and just replacing them with more Rifter Shrooms. I know I said I didn't really need it, but, you know, still be fun to have regardless. Yes, I think I will do that. Why not? You served a good purpose, regular pea shroom. Pea shooter. But now you are being replaced with a winterized version. There we go. This is very nice right here. Fortunately for the wall, not he. It doesn't have anything to replace it yet. You don't get the tall nut for quite a while until you get to the pool area. There we go. Everything is going according to plan. And see, they're still coming. Because it was after the wave. And now there's going to be a second wave. You can tell they're also slowing down too because the wave is essentially over. Actually, no, they're not really slowing down all that much. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Who knows? Maybe I'm going insane. Again, that's another possibility. Hello, you little creatures. How would you like to die? Dying in the frozen hell of your demise. Are you turning blue with fright? You should be. Because that would be the smartest thing you've done all day. At this point, I've got so much sun, I'm just going to randomly blow them up. Why not? 
if you've got this much re if you've got this much surplus, you may as well just literally blow it up. Just just spend it on blowing crap up. Why not? Because I can. Actually, I could just have three rows just purely of winter shrooms if I wanted to, but I know I I don't have enough time to do that. It's near the end. This is the end. My only friend, the end of our elaborate plans, the end. Are you starting to eat my walnut? That's no good. I'm gonna have to do something about that. I know you were dead anyway, but whatever. Anyway. I'm not sure if I have enough time to do another wave, so I think I'm just gonna end this here. It's been very fun so far. And of course, Mr. Chompy devours a zombie, but then he has to, he has a cooldown period. Obviously, that would only make sense that he would have a cooldown period when he one hit kills zombies and still remains on the field. But anyway. That is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Make sure to spread this video around like the undead. And I will see you next time I get out there and capitalize on life. Peace out, have a good one, and brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr